I thought I'd talk to you about factorials. Let me give an example so we know what we're talking about. 3 factorial is just the product of uh, 1 times 2 times 3. Now, of course, I didn't need to write the 1 because 1 times whatever comes after is still just whatever comes after, but this is 6. Everybody probably remembers the factorial in general is the product of all of the integers between 1 and whatever number you write last. So the second example, I'm going to skip 4 and go straight to 5 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, and that, after you multiply it all out, is actually 120. Probably a lot of us have encountered the factorial and, and had to figure out what is, you know, 7 factorial, what is 8 factorial, and what you, you know, you remember what you do, you, you figure out what the previous factorial is and multiply by the next number, or you just have to do a whole bunch of multiplications, which is, let's face it, not, not everybody's uh, favorite thing to do. What I want to tell you about actually is not just the factorial, but I, I want to tell you about a great approximation. Maybe you can think of it as a function, a, a machine, something that simplifies the, the description of the factorial function um, at, at, a, at a cost, and the cost is sort of accuracy. It goes by the name of Stirling's approximation, and so in order to talk about Stirling's approximation, I have to introduce a letter which will be a large number. So I'm going to use capital N and say capital N factorial, that is now, if n is 5, that is the number 120. If n is 3, that is the number 6. So I want to ask, how does this factorial function, how does it behave if n gets larger and larger and larger, okay? I mean, just as an example, you could imagine asking, what's 100 factorial? And then you're multiplying 100 times, well, so 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, all the way up to 100. It's probably an enormous number. Well, here's an approximation that will, will um, you know, allow you to understand a lot about the factorial function. So that little symbol means uh, approximately equal to, and then it is n to the power n times e to the negative n times the square root of n times the square root of 2 pi. So I didn't write equals, and I want to spend a little bit of time explaining what, this, what I mean by this little symbol here, because it's really an approximation of n factorial. It's not exactly equal to the factorial, but it's an approximation. Before I even tell you in what sense it's an approximation, it's, it's fun to ask which one of these is easier to work with. Because, Professor, you said a moment ago that you were going to show me a simplification, but at first glance, that doesn't look like a simplification to me. That looks like a right old mess compared to just 10 times, 11 times, 12 times, 13. But you tell me this is simpler. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, a fantastic point, and it, it doesn't look like it's simpler, but it actually is. So the, the amount of computations you need to compute a very large number factorial, like 100 factorial, is actually much larger than the number of computations that you would need on the computer to evaluate the right-hand side when n is 100. And in that sense, it really is a simplification. Okay, so it's, like, it's a bit of a hack here. It's a bit of a shortcut, but, but you don't get it exactly right. That's exactly right. So this is what we mean when we say it's an approximation. Instead of saying, do these two things get closer and closer to each other as n grows, I want to consider the ratio. So I have n factorial, and I form a fraction where the numerator is n factorial, and the denominator is this approximation. Sterling's approximation is an approximation in the sense that as I get larger and larger values of n, this ratio gets closer and closer to 1. What I've just described is actually a concept called a limit. And that, you know, you learn about it basically in a pre-calculus course or a calculus course. And so I, I should write out more precisely, I mean, a limit as n goes to infinity. And now I'm going to rewrite that whole ratio. n factorial over n to the n e to the negative n square root of n square root of 2 pi equals 1. So, so that is the mathematical version of this arrow. And it just means as n gets larger and larger and larger, this quantity gets closer and closer and closer to the number 1. So, okay. as, so as we start factorializing, if that's the word, bigger and bigger numbers, this Stirling approximation becomes more useful. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Here's a funny fact. For very large numbers, the two values, n factorial itself, and the approximation, they actually don't get closer to each other in, in sort of magnitude. It's just their ratio that gets close to 1. And it seems funny that can happen without these two numbers actually 
getting close to each other. So some examples are useful to see what I'm talking about there. So where are we going to start? Well, let's start with a small number, like uh, 5 factorial. So we already know that it's 120. What do we get if we, uh, if we plug 5 into this crazy formula right here? 5 to the fifth power, e to the negative 5, uh, times the square root of 5, times the square root of 2 pi. I, I did that uh, offline, and here's what you get. 118. Uh, 0.019. That's pretty close. You think that's close or not? Well, let's be honest. It's off by almost two. That's probably, that doesn't seem so close, right? Um, but remember that, uh, that really what I should be checking to, to check closeness is, is, does the ratio get close to one? So if I compute the ratio of 120 over 118, and, uh, 0 0.019 and use a calculator offline, that actually is 1.01678. Uh, Should we go smaller or bigger? We've got to go bigger. Let's go bigger. Yeah. Okay, so um, what's, a, what's a good number? Uh, 100? 100 is a great choice. <laughs> Let's see, I think I know that one. Actually, I don't, and uh, it would probably run out of ink before I finish writing it. So what can I tell you about the 100 factorial? Well, it's enormous. It has uh, 158 digits. So I probably could fit it on this paper, but, but maybe it's not too illuminating to write out a 158 digit number. That's at the same time, maybe it is illuminating and hopefully you can see it on the screen right now. And if I now use the approximation, instead of uh, writing out 158 digits, if I use the approximation, here is the, the first interesting statement I can make. The approximation captures the first two digits correctly. That feels like a failure to me. There are so many wrong digits. That seems like a bad approximation, but you're telling me that's a good approximation? Yeah, right. It sounds funny, but the, the beautiful fact is it captures the size correctly. The magnitude of the number is also correct. Consider the ratio 100 factorial over the approximation. I'll just write down the word approximation. Then it turns out that is 1.00083. And so the, you know, the ratio of the two is almost one up to uh, eight parts in 10,000. So in that sense, it's actually capturing the right size and the first digits. So even though five factorial was out by only two, and this new one you've given me is out by zillions, it's actually closer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really a fact that the approximation that the brutal distance between the two things, the actual 100 factorial and the approximation is, is very large, but the, the relative size is, is nailing the relative size. Uh, one more example? You, go, you choose a number this time. So how about 2,000? So that is a number that has 5,730 some digits. Whoa. That's a big number. That wouldn't fit on this piece of paper. And if I were to compute the approximation, let me say it like this. If I, if I compute the ratio using Sterling's approximation, it is 1.00004. At 100 factorial, the approximation, the ratio gave 1.00083, so eight parts in 10,000. This one gives four parts in 100,000. The approximation captures five, almost five digits of 2,000 factorial. But mind you, it is a number which has 5,700 and some digits. As we approach the limit, you're telling me this ratio is getting closer and closer to one, but will the actual difference between the two numbers also close at any time, or will that just continue to balloon? Yeah, the actual distance between them will continue to balloon. Absolutely grows, in fact, grows very, very fast, but the ratio still goes to one. That seems counterintuitive at first thought, doesn't it? Like... Yeah. So. Um, so another question that people ask about often is, uh, well, this is a crazy formula. On the left-hand side, you, you are just multiplying together integers. And the asymptotic description, the approximate description on the right-hand side, it's, it's got some interesting things. It's got the number e. Euler's constant it comes from calculus. It's got root 2 pi, which has a pi in the middle of it. You know, where does this formula come from, and how do these crazy constants that come from some other parts of mathematics, how do they appear in this? I don't want to give you a complete answer for that, but there is a beautiful formula which provides a fantastic explanation. There's a way to represent any integer factorial as an integral 
from zero to infinity of x to the n times e to the negative x dx. Now this is something which if you have had a course in calculus, you would see this and say, oh, I bet I can evaluate that. Think of it as a beautiful way to represent n factorial. And so some folks would say n factorial is actually represented as an integral. And once you have an integral, you can begin to play all kinds of tricks. And there's a five-step process to, to compute this approximation. Step five, at the very end, out pops the square root of two pi. Who uses Stirling's formula? So uh, many, many scientists use Stirling's formula. So uh, people in, in mathematics, in the fields of combinatorics, it's, it's, uh, it's their bread and butter. People in mathematical physics who study statistical physics, they use this, this approximation all of the time. Um, essentially, every area of mathematics in which there's large numbers appearing, the uh, approximation becomes very useful. Many areas of physics, they, the calculations are done on the back of envelopes, and those calculations always involve this approximation because it simplifies things. Are they using it to, to save time or because it's a better thing to use? It's a better thing to use, and it does save time. But it's really a, 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 a machine that will simplify calculations when you're interested in sort of behavior as number of unknowns grows to infinity or number of particles in a system grows to infinity. Um, it's, it's a simplifying machine in those situations. Of course, for smaller numbers, it may not be so useful, but once you have a large number floating around and you're, you need the factorial of that large number, this is a, a, an approximation that's very useful. You take the best computer you can find and you ask, how large a value of n can I plug in and get an exact answer? And how large can I take this formula and use the same computer to evaluate this formula? And the answer is the approximation can be evaluated for much, much larger values of the integer n than the exact formula n factorial because it just takes so long to compute. Easily in my head, though that's equal to 120. So these numbers increase quite quickly. So it's fun just to work out factorial 20, and I can do that by continuing this process, but it's much easier to get out my pocket calculator. So let's do 20. So there's 20 going in. 